Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the commander of troops for today's ceremony, Colonel Thomas J. Kilbride, commander, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for the 2024 Department of Defense National POW MIA Recognition Day Ceremony in honor of prisoners of war and those still missing in action. In just a few moments, the United States Navy Band, under the direction of Lieutenant Commander Kelly Cartwright and led by Drum Major Chief James Anderson, will conduct a pre-ceremonial concert featuring the following musical selections, Americans We and God Bless America.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem and Invocation, offered by Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel Harry E. Byrd, Deputy Pentagon Chaplain. Taking the reviewing stand are General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the hosts, the 28th Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin III. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Bird. Let us pray. Lord God, I thank you on this morning for your presence with us as we gather to continue to honor those who became prisoners of war and missing in action as they faithfully answered the call to serve the nation. We gather because we acknowledge the grief and loss and the sacrifice of their loved ones who have waited for them to come home. We gather because we believe that the continuing effort to bring our POW and MIA service members home is one way to honor them. It is our prayer that it also brings some measure of comfort to those families. I pray your blessing on these families and ask that you continue to give wisdom and favor to those dedicated to this mission until they are all home.
In your name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. In 1965, Navy Captain James Stockdale punched out of his aircraft over Vietnam. For the next seven and a half years, he created a system of communicating with his fellow captured Americans, maintaining prisoner morale and organizing resistance against ruthless torture. Looking back on his captivity, he said, I never lost faith in the end of the story. I never doubted not only that I would get out, but also I would prevail in the end and turn the experience into the defining event of my life. We're here today to maintain our faith in the end of the story, to fulfill our nation's sacred duty of honoring our prisoners of war and to never stop searching for those still missing. I want to thank Secretary Austin and the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency for inviting me here today. I had the honor of participating in the POW MIA poster unveiling ceremony this past June. There I met former prisoner of war Colonel Mike Brazelton and his wife Gloria. They're here today alongside their daughters Adriana and Allison and their son-in-law John. Mike ejected over Vietnam was held prisoner for 2,402 days over six and a half years. Robert Shoemaker is, is here today as well. Robert Shoemaker also ejected from his plane over Vietnam, spending eight years as a prisoner of war, and coining the term Hanoi Hilton as a nickname of their prison. In June, I also met Chad Lindell, whose great uncle went missing when the B-24 he was piloting crashed after him being hit by any aircraft fire in 1944. Chad's joined today by his wife, Christine, and Bill and Robin Bonnell. Bill's great uncle, Corporal Arthur Berry, was lost during the Korean War and is still unaccounted for. Thank you all for returning today, and thank you to the thank to the members of many, more than 30 families of missing who could attend. I also want to thank the, the military service and veterans service organizations here today. Thank you for your continued support of our military members and their families. Throughout the history of our nation, service members have answered the call to defend liberty. In wars fought on distant shores, battles waged on foreign soil, these heroes have faced trials many of us could scarcely imagine. Some were captured by enemy forces and held in horrific conditions. Others never made it home. Their legacy lives on in the hearts of their families, their fellow service members, and in the very fabric of our nation. As we honor the missing, we must also honor their families, the ones who waited often for years for their loved ones' return, and those that still wait. Today is also about them about the empty chair at the dinner table, about the family events not attended, about the memories that remain and the prayers that never fade. The families of our prisoners of war and our missing embody the heart and soul of our nation. The work of the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency fulfills the solemn vow we owe these families and the American people using new technology to recover and identify remains of returning service members home to their families. 
like Buffalo Soldier Lemuel Dent of the segregated 92nd Infantry Division. Private First Class Dent died in 1945 in Italy when his tank was struck by enemy fire. His remains were identified 79 years later, and he was buried in his native Maryland earlier this month. Since their founding in 1973, the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency has accounted for over 1,600 Americans killed in World War II, over 1,000 killed in Vietnam, and just last week, they accounted for the 700th missing service member of the Korean War. As long as there are families who wait answers, we will continue the search to bring them home. As long as there's one service member accounted for, we will continue our efforts to find the end of their story. Admiral Stockdale, as he said in a prison, sailed thousands of miles from home, had faith in the end of his story. Today, we commemorate the stories of our prisoners of war. When we bow to our missing, we will remain resolute to bring them home. At this, time, at this time, it is my honor to introduce a soldier, a statesman, and a steadfast advocate for our military and their families. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd J. Austin III. Good morning, everyone. And General Brown, thanks for that kind introduction. And thanks for your leadership. I'd like to welcome leaders from across the department, including Kelly McKegg, the director of the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency. It is indeed a privilege to be here with all of you. Today, we reaffirm our shared commitment to bring all of our people home, each and every one. And every year, on the third Friday in September, we gather on National POW MIA Recognition Day. But we carry our duty to them every day to fight to free those captive, to commemorate those who came back home, to search for and recover those still missing, and to do right and to do right by our POW and MIA families. As the chairman said, we are honored to be joined today by former prisoners of war, including Air Force Colonel Mike Brazelton, who endured more than six years in captivity in Vietnam, and Rear Admiral Robert Shoemaker, who was held captive for eight years. Colonel Brazelton and Rear Admiral Shoemaker, your bravery and your sacrifice inspire us all. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for these American heroes. I'd also like to recognize Colonel Brazelton's family, as well as the loved ones of those who are still missing in action. In the face of loss and uncertainty and anguish, you have shown incredible resilience and resolve. And we strive to live up to your example. So thanks for being here. And to all the military service organizations and veteran service organizations, thanks for your support and your partnership. 
You know, I spent a brief 41 years in the Army, and the Soldier's Creed says that I will never leave a fallen comrade. We lived that value, and we still do. We bring our troops home no matter what. And so in my first months as Secretary of Defense, I made it a priority to visit a DPAA lab in Hawaii. And I saw firsthand the astounding skill and care that DPAA puts into finding and identify, identifying our missing personnel. To try to provide loved ones with answers, DPA, DPAA brings together quite a team, researchers and anthropologists, archaeologists and forensic specialists, medics and interpreters, and experts in explosive ordnance disposal. It is hard work, both physically and emotionally, and it's sometimes very dangerous. But for DPAA, it's a labor of love, and it is a sacred calling. And you can see the results. As the chairman said, over the past year, DPAA has identified 111 missing personnel from World War II, 28 from the Korean War, and four from the Vietnam War. Now that is quite a feat. So let's give DPAA a hand. DPAA works closely with some 46 international allies and partners. And we rely on their cooperation for, and assistance. And we're honored to have ambassadors and defense attaches who represent some of these countries with us today, including Ambassador Marakova from Ukraine. Again, thanks to all of you for being here. Each identification is a sum of tireless diplomacy, planning, field work, and painstaking analysis back in the lab. And each identification represents America's ironclad commitment to bring our missing home. No matter how far away they are, in space or time. You know, back in December, 1972, Captain Ralph Chipman and Captain Ron Forrester of the Marine Corps were flying their A-6 intruder on a nighttime mission over North Vietnam. And sadly, they never came back. In 2021, Captain David Kim of DPAA led a recovery mission at the crash site. His team worked in austere conditions and stifling humidity. And he made a point of asking his team why they were there. And his teammates declared, Chipman and Forrester. And they answered with that every time that he asked. It was the names of the aviators and the names of their families. And after three missions across three years, DPAA located, repatriated, and identified these two heroes. Captain Kim called contributing to this mission one of his most humbling experiences in his career. Captain Forrester's daughter, Karani, was two when her father deployed to Southeast Asia. And last year, she met Captain Kim, and they bonded immediately. And she invited him to attend her father's funeral. And so next month, Captain Forrester's family, alongside the man who helped find him, will lay him to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. Today, we also pay tribute to our prisoners of war. 
Many returned with honor after long ordeals for them and their loved ones. But others lost their lives in captivity. Today, I'm also thinking of Army technician fifth grade Clifford Strickland, who fought in World War II. He endured the Bataan Death March. And he and more than 2,500 other POWs died in a prison camp in the Philippines. Like many other Americans, he was buried in an unmarked grave in the camp cemetery. And after the war, he was laid to rest as an unknown <coughs> in the Manila American Cemetery. Yet, as the years advanced, so did DNA analysis. In 2023, DPAA identified Clifford Strickland. And this summer, 82 years after he died in a distant prison camp, he was finally laid to rest near his parents in Florence, Colorado. You know, 27 years ago, the late Senator and Naval Academy graduate, John McCain, spoke at this ceremony. Senator McCain had endured six awful years as a POW in Vietnam. And he called on all Americans to remember the heroes whose company we were once blessed with, and whose sense of duty was unequal, and whose love of home and family cost them the lives they longed to return to. So let us remember those heroes, and let us show that our dedication to this mission spans generations. I'm very pleased that we're joined today by Naval Academy Midshipman I'm very pleased that we're joined today by Naval Academy midshipmen who spent part of their summer in Vietnam looking for the remains of our missing service members. Let's give them a hand. And we vow to keep working, to keep searching, and to keep the faith. You know, from my office, I look out onto this parade ground. And every day, I see the American flag and the POW MIA flag. And that flag's motto is a rallying cry not only for everyone who works at the Pentagon, but also wherever it flies across the country. And it says, you are not forgotten. Not here. Never here. That flag flies for all who have been found, and for all who are still missing, and for all the families who suffer and mourn and wait. You have endured terrible uncertainty and lived with terrible absence and suffered terrible grief. We are humbled by your strength and we are inspired by your resilience. We are proud to stand with you. We are proud to work with you because we will never give up. We will never lose hope and we will always honor the sacrifice and service of your loved ones. May God bless you. May God bless our troops our veterans, and their families, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you very much.
Would all families representing prisoners of war and those still missing in action please stand to be honored.
time, the United States Navy Band will play the Joint Service Medley. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain at your seats while the official party departs.